What's up, Menopod? Welcome to another episode of the Menopause Movement Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. G. Today, we're talking to Yannick Sayed. Yannick is a certified life coach and a certified ketogenic nutrition coach with Masters of Adult Education. She possesses extensive experience in human resources. Her professional journey took her from communications operator in the Navy, language teacher, conference interpreter and translator, resources consultant where she handled the official languages, employment, equity, and diversity portfolios in Canada. From there, she moved to learning and organizational development where she was a learning consultant and finally was in a management position. She also coordinated mentoring programs in different government departments where she worked. She was a mentor for the Lieutenant Governor's Mentoring Program for Women in Leadership. Her personal and professional experience gave her a great understanding of how one is able to rise above adversity, handle life's challenges from a woman's perspective, and it it equips her to help her clients through the obstacles they face. Her aspiration is to empower, motivate, and help her clients attain their goals to become the best versions of themselves. She has recently retired from her position in the government to pursue her passion and started her coaching company, Chrysalis Women Empowerment. She offers life, career, and ketogenic nutrition coaching, empowering women to become the women they are destined to be. Now, Yannick joined our Mental Mastery Academy in July of 2020. At that time, she had been contemplating a career move for over 10 years, and she's going to talk about it today. As a result of the action steps she took as a mental mate, Yannick not only lost 52 pounds, but she quit her corporate job and started her coaching practice because it's never too late, you guys. Yannick achieved what she previously thought was impossible, but she started with an investment in herself. To join us as the next Minnow Mate, simply get in contact with us through the little pink bubble on the bottom right of every page at menopausemovement.com or send me a DM on Instagram or Facebook at Dr. Michelle Gordon. That's D-R-M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E-G-O-R-D-O-N. The Menopause Movement has one purpose, to help end the suffering caused by menopause through transformational education and coaching. And we want to help you too. Getting into the driver's seat of my life was the first step I took to overcome the changes and the challenges I experienced with menopause. But I did it alone and it was super lonely. The menopause movement has created a community of women who are unapologetically deciding to become their best selves one small action at a time. You can achieve what Yannick and so many other women have when they took that leap of faith and invested in themselves and started taking action. Join our community and start to create a life you love. Just hit that pink bubble at the bottom of the page. On today's episode, we're gonna talk about Yannick's big fears about joining the Mental Mastery Academy and what was holding her back, how to improve motivation, regaining control of her body and her symptoms, how she was able to find purpose and take action toward it, rediscovering herself, finding the courage to make change and how it felt when she finally took action, feeling empowered around controlling her menopause symptoms, sleeping through the night and how that helped her improve her decision-making process, finding joy through following her passion, the cost of not being aware of her limitations. At the end of the episode, visit menopausemovement.com forward slash blog, where you can find the show notes, plus the links to the books and resources mentioned in the episode. And if you enjoy this episode, be sure to leave a written review, like, and subscribe on YouTube, and subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcasts, so you're always the first to know when each episode is released. And let me know who we should have on the podcast, and what can we do to make it better? I really want to hear from you. So send me an email to Dr. Gordon at menopausemovement.com or again, DM me on Facebook or on Instagram at Dr. Michelle Gordon, D-R-M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E-G-O-R-D-O-N. Thanks so much for being a part of the menopause movement today. Now let's get to Yannick. So, Yannick, welcome to the Menopause Movement Podcast. Uh, Thank you for having me. Uh, How do you say your last name? Okay. It's like say it, say it. Say it. Perfect. There's accents on the E and umlauts on the I, so that's how it's pronounced. Perfect. Yes. Say it. Say it. 
So it's like a schwa e. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So Yannick, welcome to the Menopause Movement Podcast. I'm super happy to have you here today. And um, you've you joined our program. You joined as a minnow mate back in July of 2020. Right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And tell me, uh, tell me where you live. I live in beautiful Nova Scotia, Canada, on the East Coast. <laughs> nice, beautiful. And uh, what do you do for a living now? Well, now I'm a life and career coach, but before that I was uh, mm-hmm. an administrator. So I left a corporate management position to uh, start my career practice, my coaching practice. And uh, being, I've been joined a mental mate is one of the factors <laughs> that propelled me into this new career. So a major career change yes. in the middle of your life. A big paradigm shift. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So before you decided to join, uh, join in and and invest in in yourself as a middle mate, what would you say was your biggest skepticism or hesitancy? For joining the group, the program? Yeah. Yeah. Not knowing what the outcome would be necessarily, but I was at a, in a position where I didn't know what to do. So uh, I had tried many things before and I had not met my needs and uh, I was afraid I would have the same outcome and uh, mm. fortunately it was not but that I would say it was the fear of having the same outcomes meaning not having resolved my issue or understanding right. what was going on with me yeah yeah so you said your biggest skepticism before joining was uh, not not sure that you would actually have an outcome and whether it was worth it for you to actually in in enroll exactly because I've had tried other things and uh, I left more discouraged than before and my never getting a solution to my problem so that was my fear of experiencing this again sure but what what else what else did you try oh well first basically the you go see your physician and then I went to see a naturopath and then I talked to other women who have tried different things and share their experience, Uh, you know, it's mostly um, anecdotal, you know, and Mm -hmm. uh, I I find that uh, as the time progressed, I was feeling worse and uh, because I had not uh, reined in what was causing my symptoms. And what I found is that no matter where I was, it's more like, uh, this is a rite of passage and this is what's going to happen and just put up with that. You can, Mm -hmm. you can take this medicine or this herb, but, um, there's more to it. I knew Mm -hmm. there was more to it and I not found it. So I thought, well, you know, if you want to resolve an issue, sometimes it takes a few tries. It's, you know, so I'll try it again, but not bringing my hopes up. However, it was the opposite uh, from the time I started. Yeah, let's let's just let's just break this down for a second before we go into, you know, your awesome results. Um, When when we feel discouraged, like it's so easy to have like an all or nothing kind of attitude and say, uh, you know, I tried this, I tried that before. It's, you know, especially like when it comes to weight loss, because it's so easy to gain weight and it feels like it's so hard to lose it, right? When it comes to trying to believe in ourselves, right? Sometimes we have to take that risk of that leap of faith. And it sounds like that's what you did was you're like, I'm not sure this is going to work, but I'm going to try it. So what were the factors that actually helped you to, you know, take that leap of faith that, that, that made made it worth it for you to actually say, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna try this and see. Well, it's funny you talked about weight loss. I was gaining weight for no reason. I was eating healthy, mm-hmm. following the food guide. I was physically active, and uh, whomever I was consulting was telling me, "Oh, I don't have to teach you anything about nutrition. You're eating healthy." So yeah. why is this happening to my body? I didn't recognize myself, and I was. Feeling it, it felt like uh, I was in a different shell. Like I would look at myself and I said, "That's not me." And I would walk and avoid the mirror, you know. And uh, I'm going, "What am I doing wrong?" And at this point, you reach a point of desperation. And I thought, "I have nothing to lose right now. <laughs> I'm not sure yeah. where it's going to go, but I cannot continue 
on, the, on this path, not having resolution and actually feeling worse and gaining more weight. This is what I was, the more I was trying to lose weight, the more I was gaining, it just didn't make any sense. So you reach a point of desperation and say, okay, I'm gonna try this now because nothing else has worked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right, so you were, you were feeling desperate. Yes. Now, when, when, you, when you joined, right? What was the first thing that made you say, oh, hell yeah, this is right, this is right for me? Well, when I was in the beta, it's just the little bit of tidbits of information was eye-opening because there's a correlation, to, you know, and the big thing is correlation with what you eat and how it affects you. So that was mm -hmm. never really discussed. So when I went, oh, and I applied it, I went, well, wow, okay, I need yeah. to know more. And um, yeah, the, the, once you have a little victory, you want more. And I was the first victory in a long time, I'd say, probably worked on it for five years and, you know, nothing and worked hard and not getting the results. And here very quickly, I saw a change, a little victory, and I felt better and it was encouraging. And I went, I cannot leave it there. I need to know more. Got it. So you got a little victory in our, in our beta course. And then, and then as you got the little bit, the little victories, you started to see that maybe, maybe there was something here. Yes. That was the first time I saw there was a light at the end of the tunnel. There was something I could see results. I said, well, it's the beginning you know, you have to keep going and see where it's going to take you. Not knowing where I was yeah. going to end up, but I liked, wow, the little bit difference. And I felt, I said, well, we have to go and see where else this will take me. Yeah. So that yeah, was the deciding good. moment. I love that. Okay. And so after, after joining with the Minnow Mates and being a Minnow Mate for a, a while, tell me about, you know, what, what changed in your life in terms of perception or life views or relationships uh, or all three, you know, all this, how you perceive yourself affects everything else in your life. So the symptoms of menopause that were really, they were affecting me. I didn't realize to what point until around that time again, you know, I could see I'm not myself. I'm more short tempered and I'm known to be, I was known to be a calm, easygoing person. And I found I was more short tempered. Uh, even the pets notice you could tell, <laughs> uh, <laughs> mommy's not happy. I could see the change in behavior, my relationship with my children and my husband. Yeah. And I went, this is not how, it was this is not how i want to be so that's where i was and also especially i don't can i speak for men but women we are we attach a lot to our physical appearance so i didn't like the way i looked and uh i had to buy new clothes and i didn't really like you know just so it would fit me and feel comfortable i wasn't myself anymore i couldn't be the true the real me it was more a compromise okay well I'm that when I'm shaped this way, this is what I have to wear and this is what I have to do. So I was not happy with how I saw myself and it also affected a bit of my self-confidence. Silly enough, mm, okay. um, self-doubt. So you had a lot of self-doubt. Um, and so what, you know, you've been, so you've been a mental mate for just over, you know, just mm, about 15, 15 months. months or so, right? Yes. And so tell me, let's, you know, what specifically has changed about your, say, self-perception or self-doubt? I regained control of, as much as we can say control of my body. So that was a win. And I need, I'm a person who needs to see results. So, okay. Then I felt better about myself. And also, I don't know if the pandemic was part of it and the exercise that we did with you, the, the introspection. And I was on the car. I was thinking about it, but I realized who I was. I was regaining myself and I saw that my purpose had changed and I had since found my purpose. I was, it was always there, but now the fear of, as I've gained more confidence because I felt better in my skin, I just yeah. rediscovered myself and my sense of purpose was clearer to me and I, 
and having to take a leap of faith, you need to have self-confidence. So when you're not yourself, when you're kind of broken, you can't do that. You you cling on to mm -hmm. what you know. And uh, make a long story short, it's just, um, I just went for it. I knew in order to be happy, that was the next step that I need to do. Scary, I'm not saying it was easy, it was scary, but I had the confidence to make that leap of faith. And I remembered who I was because I had done it before, not to that extreme. And I went, why did I wait so long? Thank goodness I went to the exercise, I recaptured myself, I reined in all of that I was. And uh, it's almost like the sky opened, it's just, I don't know how to describe it, but it's just like, I have to go do this. The same way that I thought, I need to join the man who made. I went, mm -hmm. oh no, no, Yannick, you need to move there. You have to to move forward. And that's when I decided to uh, leave my position. Okay, so you left your you left your career. So let's, let's um, I'm gonna come back to that, but what I wanna ask you is, was there any particular aha or lesson that you got uh, initially from the first, you know, say three months in the program? Three, well, the three months of the yeah. program, the first the three first months, three months yeah. it's to understand my symptoms, you know, what triggers them. I learned what they were and it was not just in my head. It was not something I had to put up with like I was told to. There was a way yeah. to attenuate that and I went, wow, because my philosophy up until then is that, you know, hopefully it won't take 20 years, but this is something I have to endure. And, and uh, that didn't make me happy, but it's almost like I had to resign to endure. And it's one thing, as you said, you know, suffering is a, is an option, it's optional. I went, yes, I, I think I even told you I don't have to suffer because this is what I was taught. And knowing that it's like, okay, and I just ate it up. I just wanted, and I was very excited in learning in the next step, you know, into the program. And, and then I saw the result, it's just like, Oof, hallelujah, it's happening. Uh, why didn't I yeah. have found this before? Get out of my misery for so many years. It's <laughs> like, you know, and to feel myself again. Yeah, yeah. That's the big thing, so Amber, is me <laughs> again, you know? Yeah, well, it's, it's, a, it's a big, you know, it's a big complaint of women in menopause who, you know, they just don't feel like they're themselves, you know, their weight gains and, you know, the, the, the body shift ch shape changes and then there's this whole mood thing. And so for you, you know, you, you said you experienced some of that and how long had you been considering a career change? I'd say in the back of my mind, probably around the same time the symptoms probably before that i would say let me think about 10 years okay and and was there what was holding you back from making that change would you say uh well it's the comfort the fear of the unknown okay i had gone back to school okay. did my masters and then i got a new promotion i got the big job i wanted and uh you know, I was doing things and I said, okay, once I finish this, once I pay this, and once I finish your menu, I will do it, you know? And uh, and I realized it was just a safety, a, a life jacket, because mm -hmm. I was not totally myself. Didn't feel confident. Okay. okay, so I needed to have the safety valve, a safety cushion to make the move. But I felt really um, doubtful. I doubted myself. A lot of self-doubt. I guess I want to do it, but but I did have all these buts, and and it had to do with my self-confidence. When you know, getting up in the morning, to get ready for work was a chore because mm -hmm. I had to face myself in the mirror right off to start my day. That's how I felt. So when you don't feel good about yourself, your confidence is low. Who am I to do this? I'm not going to make it. So all these self-talk was going on. But looking back, mm -hmm. you're asking me the question, but it was quite a while. But as time went by, the less assured I was to make that change. So, so the, as time went by, you, you 
you became less and less, you, you were more stuck in your ways, right? Yes, I'm thinking, oh yeah, it would be nice, I will do that, but uh, you know, you go back to default. Yeah, so I was not right, moving right. forward. And self-doubt, self-doubt had a lot to do, and that's because I didn't feel good about in my skin. Right, and so what role would you say that the, you know, be, becoming a minnow mate and doing the work inside the Minnow Mastery Academy played in helping you find that confidence to start to explore new changes in your life? Well, the first thing is uh, we were able to share with the other Minnow mates and also the discussions we had on coaching call. I realized I was not, you know, flippy. These things were real and they needed to be addressed and there's something that could be done about it instead of being discarded. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was very reassuring. First of all, I said, okay. And I realized, and I found out I was not the only one who felt that way. It was not Yannick right. who was the problem. Thinking, you know, because I had this self-talk. So that helped a lot. And the introspection, I forgot the name of the exercise when we did the visualizing and all that. and. Mm -hmm. And the coaching call, and that's, and you ask probing questions, and I went, yeah, why not? Yeah, so we did this. We did this really great exercise on how to, how to kind of visualize the life you want, and it was really powerful for for everyone who attended, and and all the women who attended that started to make changes, and anyone who joins our program gets that as a bonus, so you can start to really figure out what your purpose is. Can you just give me a specific example of a breakthrough or an aha that you had as a result of joining this program? Aha, uh -huh. this many aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, well, first, the symptoms, there was something you could do about it. So I did not have to tolerate them, you know, and, and, and I experienced it by, for one thing I've learned, for example, um, I like my glass of red wine once in a while. And I, we talked about it, and then I had it, and I went, ooh, I, 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 I um, had um, hot flashes, not instantly, but shortly after that. And then I experimented yeah. with the food. We had discussed, and I went, okay, that's a trigger, so I know. So that gave me, uh, I felt empowered because I said, well, you know, if I do this, it's a choice, but I, I know what will happen. It's not hoping for the best that, uh, you know, Yannick, yeah. A sense of control, definitely. That that uh, that was a big win for me. Also, like I said, the community is to, to see that other women were going through the same thing, and I think the openness. Because when I, the people I know in my personal life, although this was virtual, I never had that sense. It was more like um, a pity party, just put up with this. Versus here, we were sharing. We were sharing our experience. We were sharing with what worked, what didn't work. Uh, we were encouraging each other. That was, um, that really strengthened me. That, mm -hmm. that, that, that community was very useful. That, that's, uh, that was a turning point for me as well because when you're stuck in your mindset, you know, of uh, despair, it, it, it paralyzes you. And every time we had uh, our coaching call and going through the lesson, the modules, I felt better. And that's when I realized this, where I was when I started is not who I was. And I was, this, the me was emerging again. And from that, I got the strength, the confidence came back, but, and the rest is history. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm surprised my, at myself talking to you now yet yeah, this is this has been the path but um i'm not sure i would be here and doing what i'm doing now coaching if i had not um joined the menu mate seriously because wow. i was at a point that it was more um not defeat but you just uh the, i cannot think in english the french wants to come out here but um uh, defeat and acceptance of it is what it is and mm. you know and, and I was almost uh, going to give up at the life I thought I could have because I was tired also so you had a dream to leave corporate America or corporate Canada yeah Canada, <laughs> but to leave <laughs> to leave the corporate world and to 
do something on your own to start your own business or and and to help people in in some way shape or form mm -hmm. but the person that you had become through menopause was not the person who could actually take that step no. and so you joined our program you did the work and you were able to make a change so can you just talk a little bit about what specifically you changed how i changed but first i had to change my mindset okay my mindset because and uh to remember you create the life you 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 are the reins right so you create the life you want and that's one thing that was discussed so that was clear to me so i realized i couldn't pursue what i wanted to do by keeping the status quo I, I, okay. I, I could not be in two places at the same time so i i made the decision well i had taken some training in between just before and after doing that and i realized mm -hmm. no i have to invest the whole me to achieve what i want to do so that was clear to me and i made the this the big decision to leave uh, my managers my management position just like that so you quit you you quit your I job i quit my job i quit my job all the benefits <laughs> i quit my job I wouldn't yeah. have been able to do I, that. I, that's a huge leap. I mean, that's a huge leap. I did the same thing. I mean, you know, I had a really successful general surgery practice. And when I realized that I could reach women and that I felt a lot better in my life because of it, because the, I, I did not like managing surgeons and I didn't like going to a hospital every day. And I was, and, and that's like, you know, the pinnacle of, the pinnacle of, of surgery. I mean, the pinnacle of medicine actually is to be a surgeon. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, you know, I hate this life. I really hate this life. And I had to come to grips with the fact that I created a life I hated. And so I was able to, you know, quit my job and make a plan and, and come in full time with the menopause movement. And it's stories like yours that make it so, you know, worth it to me because, you know, I'm not the only one who created a life they didn't love. I mean, here you are and you did that. And what you've done is you've been able to leave that job that may have been, you know, I don't know if it was soul sucking, but that's how I feel about my surgical <laughs> career and start something and helping, helping people. So helping is the big, is yeah. the big work because I had, and this is it. I felt like I was being suppressed being me because I like to help I, my backgrounds in education. So I was always able to do this somehow and then i volunteer working with women's group and so on but i thought it's funny you innocent you know your naivete i said okay if i'm not this higher position i can affect the changes and really help and that's not what it was it was mostly administrative and red tape and uh, i could not practice my craft and i could not um uh, what i thought i could bring and do was impeding. I could not do it in the position I was in. And I try and it was sucking my soul, my, uh, the life out of me. Because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what my purpose was, I could not bring it into the position. You know, so I was almost, uh, I'm a stubborn person. I said, no, I'm going to make it happen. But what was happening, uh, the analogy I use is like Don Quixote against the windmill. And the windmill kept hitting me. <laughs> Boom, boom, and then uh, not feeling confident, you almost feel like it's your fault. You know, I'm doing it wrong, and I'm. So there yeah. was, and having the, 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 well, one big thing is that the clarity, my brain, I don't have all this brain fog, which was a contributing factor as well because you self doubt, and then you, if your brain is not functioning. It's just like it. It was almost like a perfect storm. So I mm -hmm. needed to stop and then take stock and do the introspection. And I'll, and that was through the Menomate, definitely. I did all that and I went, you know what? This is not working. I can do this. Took a deep breath, signed my resignation, pressed the send button. But once I pressed that send button, before I could feel the anxiety around my throat. And once I pressed it, it was like, exhale and I went okay yeah. where do we go well I know where to go just go do it have your plan but it was a relief also although scary but it was a relief and now mm -hmm. once I made that decision I'm happy every morning I wake up 
look forward to the day instead of waking up, having to face myself in the mirror to get ready for work and be Don Quixote. So that, mm -hmm. that's gone. That life is gone and I am where I need to be. You know, sometimes just taking action. I mean, I like to say that action breeds clarity and sometimes just taking an action, like for you, just, you know, having a conversation with yourself about, well, what is it that I really want? And oftentimes we have to look at what it is we don't want in order to start to see what we do want. And so you start there and then you took this action of, okay, I'm actually going to do it. And then all of a sudden it's like the world opens up when you actually take that, you know, you find the courage to, to do the hard thing. And the hard thing for you may have been to, to actually move forward and resign, right? And my son who lives on the West Coast, I'm on the East Coast. Yeah. He's the baby. It is very close to me. I have two daughters, but they always were encouraging me and I said, I can do it. And, and uh, when I made that decision, I called, no, he called me. He said, what's going on? He could hear it in my voice. Yeah. I had no idea to what extent not living the life I want had affected me. But he, he didn't see me. He did not have the visual. He said, Mom, what's going on? And I told him, he said, I, I'm not surprised. He said, Mom, I hear it in your voice. So that's when I knew I did the right thing, although scary. But that was another aha moment. You don't realize if you're not yourself, if you're not happy with yourself, if you're not happy in your life, how it affects every aspect of your life. You don't realize yeah. that you think you're in control, but no. And as after I made the decision and I talked to people and some close friends and they say, I can tell we got Yannick back. Wow. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's just like life can just like come and just like put layers on top of you and just push you down and push you down and push you down. And then finally, you know, once you start to see, oh, I can come out of it, it's almost like, you know, the, I don't know, I, it doesn't sound like you're really depressed, but you were just like kind of going through the motions, right? Yeah, I resigned. You resigned to the existence. <laughs> I don't even yeah. call it a life. You resigned to that existence. You know, yes, I make a good paycheck yeah. and yes, I can do this, but eh. You know, so I say where I was was in existence versus now it's a life. That's the difference. And how much weight have you lost? 50 since you joined us? Total 52 pounds. Wow, in the last 15 months? Yes. Wow, congratulations. Yes, so. And, and <laughs> I mean, how, how, how hard would you say that was like in terms of like once you made your decision what was the biggest, let's, let's talk about it this way. What was the biggest factor that allowed you to make those changes that you had? To, because, it, you know, you don't lose weight without changing your behavior, right? Yeah. So what was the biggest factor that allowed you to make that decision that you were going to, you were going to do the things that you had to do to lose 52 pounds? Well, I didn't feel, you know, there was different symptoms that were coming in and I'm not, I don't like to only take prescription. Sometimes you need prescription or surgery, but I'm going, this is natural and I'm doing everything right. And why am I getting weight? And then when I found out what foods were causing, because I was eating healthy, but there were other mm -hmm. factors, uh, some of the foods that are inflammatory, that are high carb and, and, and the sugars, even though, you know, so cleaning, yeah. cleaning, and sh the different food choice, although they were healthy, some are eliminated. And I saw and I've discovered the one that were affecting me. And, you know, if after five days of doing this, you don't have knee, you don't feel tightness in your knee, why would you go back? Okay. So that, okay. <laughs> uh, I'll... So you changed your, you changed your diet and, and started having less pain. That was the first thing that happened. And it's never come back. And then and and I'm not exercising more than I did before. That's the funny thing. I'm not doing any more, yeah. but I could see the result and it just kept. That's and true. I didn't realize yeah. how much until I started to measure and weigh in. I went, I didn't realize that. Or I would put some clothes and I went, oh my gosh, I can't wear this. It's, I'm walking and I'm losing my pants. My husband was funny, making fun of me. I went, <laughs> you, you know, you know you're losing, but when you see result like that by putting a pair of pants that was your go-to business pants and mm -hmm. it's falling off you went oh okay let's go on the scale wow because i i know the numbers are not enough being an athlete for myself you know even when i was a skinny mini mm -hmm. i was much heavier than people would realize that because of the muscle mass so i don't get 
hung up too much on the numbers. It was the whole physiology, morphology, but my body was not looking right. So that's when I really got upset. It was not just the numbers. And I was not looking at, I was looking at the numbers, but then very quickly, at one point, it just seems like everything went, you know, I don't know why there was, it was an increment. And then at one point, I don't know if the machine was breathing faster, but there was this big change. And that's when I realized, oh, um, my body's changing. And I was look, and then I said, let's my, look at, it's funny. Let's look at, let's look at myself in the mirror. And I went, okay, it's not too bad. Versus like, so, yeah, versus so, like, ugh. Right. So, so instead of like putting away the mirrors like I did or, or avoiding the mirror, you can look in the mirror and like what you see now. Oh, I can use the full size mirror yeah. now, which I would not yeah, before. Awesome. So after that, it was a motivator. First, yeah, I love that. the tightness in the knee was gone and I would go to, ta you know, um, yeah. So the proof is in the pudding, you say, you know, the fact that. Yeah five days of re re removing the sugars and the heavy grains for me worked. So I tweaked mm -hmm. what was. Well, it worked, it worked in terms of, for you, it started with, with, with how you felt. And as you noticed that you were starting to feel better, then you found more energy and then you were able to make other changes in your the diet. The energy, right? exactly, the energy, because you know, like I said, when you're feeling defeated and then you're put, going through the motions, it was also feeling tired. You know, you, this is mm -hmm. why you gave up your time, whatever, you just go on. And there was this surge of energy that came back. Yeah. So, oh yeah, I forgot to mention the surge of energy. And another thing that was big is that I could sleep, you know, just hit the pillow and go to sleep, not having to do exercise to go to sleep, go back this, you know, hit the pillow and, and I wake up the next day. And, uh, and I feel sorry for some of my friends who wake up three or four times a night. I don't have that anymore. So tell me, how long uh, after joining the program were you able to sleep through the night? I'd say maybe two months, three, two okay. months. So you made, you made, so, so the thing that I love about this program is it's like small changes that don't feel like a lot, but they pay off big. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what I, that's actually what I love about it. And that's what I love about what happened with me and how I made those changes too. Right. And you don't always realize it until maybe somebody mentioned it and say, Oh yeah, you know, I, I, I've been, Oh, I've, I've not woken up or it's six thirty. This, I don't remember. And I would say something, I don't remember falling asleep. You know, when mm -hmm. you have problems sleeping, you do this and then eventually you fall asleep. And now I would say, I'd say, I don't remember falling asleep. I just remember waking up. Oh, that feels good. And I was hoping it would continue. It wasn't a, it was not a one-off anymore. It is the norm now. So I That's sleep. So, so if I don't sleep, I'll be very worried. Like the night where I <laughs> cannot fall asleep, I will get anguish because now okay. my norm, my norm is I hit the pillow and I go to sleep and I wake up. I don't even need to set my alarm. I wake up. That's my body great. gets the rest it needs. Uh huh. So let's talk a little bit about you know you 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 made this change and so let's talk about about following your passion and what that means to you. Well, passion brings me joy, mm -hmm. and I've always felt like that in any other positions I had and that was gone that fire was gone that spark was gone and now just thinking about it just um I, it, I feel exhilarated I, it gives me energy and uh, the only thing I can say is that it's too bad that I waited so long but it's in the past I'm not going to dwell on that because mm -hmm. now um I have a client and I had a aha she had an aha moment but I was all it just brought me joy. It brings me That's joy and, and it's a great feeling. Yeah, it's feel, you know, it's, it's kind of addictive, right? I mean, the, you know, it, those of us who are in this, this industry who, you know, help others through, through coaching or through education, it's the reason why we do it is not for money. We do it because we have this desire to help people and yeah, you know, we got to pay our staff. And so we got to charge for things. And also the other thing about charging is that when, when you pay for something, you're going to pay more attention to it. And so it's really important that we have some sort of an exchange, but when people like Yannick 
come and tell me, hey, you know, I lost 50 pounds or, hey, I'm able to change my career now and, and I like myself and I can sleep through the night. These are the things that light me up and make me want to do it more. And so for you, I would say probably um, I'm, I'm going to just say you probably feel the same yes. way. I mean, it's just you get addicted to it. Yes. Uh, you know, when I had this aha moment with my, my clients, it, it almost brought tears of joys, you know, when I said, okay, stay calm. Yeah. But I was excited for her. I was just so happy. And uh, yeah, that that's yeah, it's a feeling I had not had in a long time. And this is, like I say every morning, I don't dread. I look forward to what the day will bring. And every day yeah. is a good day as a whole yeah. because I feel a sense of my, my purpose but my passion I can find I found my purpose and pursuing my passion at the same time they're not synonym right you have a mm -hmm. passion but you have a purpose and I had my I found my purpose and I can exercise my passion through it so how good is that I love it that's great now what uh, for somebody who was sitting on the fence and thinking about joining our our paid programs what would you what would you say to them what would i say okay so you sit on the fence what what are you afraid of what do you have to lose are you happy where you're at now do you know what to do about it why don't you give it a try yeah, yeah. what do you have to yeah. lose then would you say that it took you a lot of time every week to consume and and do you know make the changes that were recommended every week no considering the kind of job i had you know working 10 12 hours a day i still found the time and that's and i made it a priority i would carve some time but it's not daunting it's easily mm -hmm. done um yeah. uh, to my surprise and that was my fear not to find the time to do it uh, there was yeah. maybe weeks where it was a bit harder because i was traveling you know, not traveling but uh well, because we were in the middle of COVID as well, right? So yeah. we were, uh, and I was in the education, the managing schools across the country. So it was crazy. So some days were harder than others because it was demands, but I always find time. So it was not a mm -hmm. stressor. And I was always uh, thankful that I did take the time that, because I invested, it's an investment in yourself. It's an investment yeah. in yourself. Yeah. And I said, I have to be true to myself because it's about me. And, you know, and when I would do the module and listen, I'd say, ah, I'm glad I did this. And then I would implement it. And I think this is the attitude we have to have. It's an investment in ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, and nobody else but us can do it. So, but it's, it's um, if anybody says it, they're busy, they're busy women, they're busy career women. Yeah, that's fine. But you, you will find time. I just didn't watch Netflix as much because I invested in me. You can find the time. Mm. So yeah, see it an investment in you and your well being to be and be That's your great. true self. Yeah, I highly recommend it because it's uh, every time uh, I would do a module and learn a little nugget, get a little nugget from it. It's like, oh, you know, it, it's uh, there's been so much, but to me, it was confident, especially having gone through so many years and not knowing to do what to do with myself mm -hmm. and having, so yep. Sorry. When you compare, when you compare the life before you joined as a minnow mate, the life you have now, right? Would you say that the changes that you made, you've made through these last 15 months have seemed like really radical or did they seem kind of gradual and, and easier? It was gradual. I think it was gradual. They were being put in place, but I didn't realize it was sincerous. It was building on each change was building on the other. Yeah. And then it's like, yeah. And have you learned how to handle setbacks? In, in a way that that is manageable setbacks in my physical let's say you know let's let's use diet for an example mm -hmm. because it's you know every every women in menopause want to lose weight and it's so common that we have this idea that you know i'm i'm on a diet and i'm not going to have any sugar and then oh ice cream and then and then we have the ice cream and then we think okay well i've failed the diet now and so now i'm going to have pizza i'm going to have hamburgers i'm going to have french fries and all the other things that that are going to make me feel like crap so how, how do you handle your setbacks if, let's say, you well, cheat the, on the, your diet, the, well, First of all, I see it as a lifestyle, so I don't use the word diet. So that was the first change, because if you think okay. diet, you're thinking temporary. 
Okay, I'm not there to go mm -hmm. build muscle just for a competition or something like that. It's a lifestyle, right? Sure. So we're human. We do slip. <laughs> so, for example, there is my birthday. My youngest daughter had a birthday party for me to celebrate my my uh, retirement and my new career. Yeah. Well, she had this beautiful lemon. She had things done, and uh, there was a lemon, a key lime, key lime. Um, cheesecake it was smooth it melted in yeah. your mouth i was not gonna not gonna have it i had a little piece and i said well it is what it is but you know tomorrow i'll just be mindful of what i eat like uh, before i would have beat myself over the head oh i cheated blah 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 mm -hmm. no it's done tomorrow is another day and we reset it so i don't cling on to mishap or oopsie moments uh that's i changed my mindset that's very important because if you start beating on yourself it just perpetuates and you can find yeah. yourself sliding back and it's not just about eating habits it's about anything we're not mm -hmm. we're fallible we're human beings so you had a bad moment you ate something you, sh you wouldn't eat because you know i said okay i eat that i'm gonna have tightness in my neck and my back's gonna hurt this is what happens when i eat grains mm -hmm. sure. i know that if i make it myself i know how to make it but you know i had that piece that's fine i move on or uh, and then what i do set back uh, you know if you make a mistake you did something wrong you know, you didn't mean to do something or say something to someone and went on and went on. It wasn't taking it the right way. Well, okay, I'm, oopsie, sorry. Uh, you do better next time because it's in the past. You can't change that. Yeah. So that's one thing I've no. learned. It's in the past. All I can do is control what I'm doing now and what I'm going to do next. So that's that's, that's what I find helped me. Because trust me, I've had my moments when I slipped. <laughs> sure, everyone does. Was there anything else that, that you were hoping to share that we didn't get to? Trying to think. There's so much I want to share. Well, definitely what I could say is that I am here today, the way I am now, is, try not to get emotional here, but had I not met, joined the Man of Maid, I don't think I would have had the same path. I'm not sure where I would mm. have ended up. Uh, all I can say is that it, it was not very positive and it would have been, I might have become a bitter person, you know, not satisfied with life and then just putting, going through the motion until you retire. That's probably where mm -hmm. I might have been because this is where I was headed. I wanted to do things, but I didn't feel like I could, didn't have the confidence. It, it was, I realized I'm in the center of everything that affects me. And I had to take care of myself first and everything fell into place. Mm -hmm. My relationship with my children, relationship with my, my spouse, uh, how I perceive myself and also how the world sees me too. Um, and I had not realized how um, some people saw that I needed to make a change before I did. And I didn't know that. The people who really knew me and they were holding their breath and also I realized I was not really ready to receive any advice they would have had for me because I was not in the right mindset. So I realized it's all connected. It's all connected. And, um, and looking after number one, they say is the most important thing because if you don't, nothing else works. That's great. Well, Yannick, where can people find you? Well, you can find me by, I don't have a website. It's about to be published, but you can reach me at chrysaliswomenempowerment.ca. That's the website. And uh, I have an email, chrysaliswomenempowerment at gmail.com. Chrysaliswomenempowerment.ca. Dot .ca, that's the website that will be published okay, soon. Great. And yeah. uh, until then, my email also is chrysaliswomenempowerment at gmail.com. Chrysalis Women Empowerment. Yannick is on a mission to help empower women, and uh, let's let's help her do that. Yannick, thanks so much for being a part of the menopause movement and coming on the podcast. Well, thank you today. for having me. Did you know that menopause is not a medical condition? Most doctors don't know this either. I like to say that menopause is the privilege of a long life, and to really take hold of our lives in menopause, we have to unlearn what society and the medical establishment has told us about menopause. Thanks so much for being a part of the menopause movement.